AWS, Amazon Web Services is one of the oldest and one of the leading cloud providers in the market today, offering close to 200 plus services. And it's very easy for us to get lost in these different 200 plus services. So today in this video, I will talk about 24 most popular AWS products uh, under these different categories. Uh, we will have a very quick overview of what exactly these services do to enable you to understand whether you should use this service or not. So we'll take a very quick sneak peek into what exactly these 24 services do and how you could use these services in your solutions. So let's get started. So these are those 24 services which are according to me the most used. Obviously you could differ on certain services but let's quickly understand uh, what exactly these services do. So the bread and butter of AWS has been its compute from the very beginning. So the very first and the most popular service is EC2 Elastic Compute Cloud. It is the IS offering from AWS and you using EC2 you could create your virtual machines, you can spin up your virtual machines and you could add scale, uh, you could downgrade the machines very easily. So this is the basic, the most important and the strength of AWS, which is its EC2 service. The second in the list is Lambda, which is a very important and widely used service. It is an event driven compute service, serverless compute service. Uh, and under Lambda, you could write your custom application code to do certain task which are very small which are which are required to do a specific activity suppose you take a photograph you upload it somewhere and then you run a lambda function on top of it so that it could be resized into a tablet or a, for a tablet or a laptop so those kind of small things suppose you want to upload an excel file you can run the lambda to convert that excel file into a csv i'm just giving you examples so if you want to create your end-to-end -end web application, Lambda functions could be used at certain places to, uh, you know, to create those event-driven uh, functions. So very important serverless offering under compute. The third in the list is Elastic Beanstalk and sometimes we get confused between Lambda and Beanstalk because there are a lot of similarity. You could deploy your code into Beanstalk and create your web application. Beanstalk would deploy and run your web application without any compute uh, facility uh, being managed by you specifically. So the difference between Lambda and Beanstalk is Lambda is created for specific tasks which are smaller in size. Wherein for Beanstalk you could deploy your whole website on Beanstalk. So it is to deploy your full web, full scale web applications. You could deploy your code and then rest is taken care by AWS. Hello friends, a quick reminder, AWS for Dummies course, which is for beginners on cloud, especially on AWS is now live. We have more than 12 plus hours of con content on the course with hands-on exercises and quizzes. So do check this offer, it's for limited time. I really want you guys to get onto this cloud journey. So link is in the description, check it out and I really want to see you there. Now back to the video. Another very important service in AWS is AWS S3, which is an object storage, which is called as simple storage services. It is an object store where you could store all kinds of data, structured, unstructured, semi-structured data. and Potentially, this becomes your landing zone where whenever you're starting any kind of work in AWS S3 bucket, you need to create an S3 bucket, upload your files. It could also create, become your data lake. Amazon S3 could also host a website with static content. There are plenty of uses. You, so you could upload your log files, analytics data, videos, music files. Twitter feeds, whatever you call it, simple storage service S3 bucket is the object storage which you need to use. The next in the list is Elastic Block Store which is also called as EBS. So this actually provides the block storage or block volume for your EC2 instance. You can attach your SSD or your HDD uh, block store uh, for your EC2 instances and these are very high performing uh, block storage. So reads and writes become really fast if you attach EC2 and EBS. So your uh, Elastic Block Store becomes your backbone of your EC2 instance and you could store all the data into this block store. So under database, the first product offering is uh, Amazon Aurora, which is the RDBMS relational database management service. And it offers full compatibility with MySQL and PostgreSQL databases and with 5x and 3x uh, throughput speed. 
So if you need a Postgres or a MySQL database instance, you don't have to provision it on EC2. You could simply use this serverless uh, service and rest all will be managed by AWS while you leverage all the benefits of MySQL and Postgres. And the second one is Dynamo DB, which is a NoSQL database. If you want to know more about NoSQL database, there's a specific video I have created. But this particular service is again uh, offered by AWS as a serverless service, wherein you could provision key value or document databases. So this is the NoSQL database offering. So the next in the list is RDS, Relational Database Service, which consists of six different data uh, databases offered by AWS. Amazon Aurora comes under this, then Postgres SQL, uh, MySQL, MariaDB, um, SQL Server, Oracle, all these kind of different databases could be provisioned under relational database service. And again, everything is managed by AWS. So the last one is Elastic Cache, which is an in-memory DB offering by AWS you could get microsecond performance using in-memory caching uh, uh, use cases like gaming streaming data hosting content which needs high performance all that can be cached in memory and for that you use elastic caching so the next category is network and content delivery and under this the first product is vpc virtual private cloud it's an offering which you might have heard of in google and azure as well with the help of vpc you could understand how you would manage your resources how one resource would connect to the other resource within that virtual network environment, how you would secure your cloud environment, all that happens through VPC and generally your networking team would be doing this work for you. The second offering is CloudFront, which is a content delivery uh, network offering. Whenever there is a requirement to access certain content from a certain geographical location, this CloudFront service could provide that particular uh, data into that particular edge location, AWS edge location, so that the user who's sitting uh, closer to that particular geolocation could fetch the data using CloudFront from that particular edge location. So it's a CDN offering. So Route 53 is a very fancy name for a simple DNS service, domain name service. If you don't know what is DNS, go check out my video. There's a complete playlist for networking. So DNS, domain name service, helps you get the IP address of any website you want to navigate. So Route 53 is the component which you need to configure if you want to use the DNS service within AWS. Elastic load balancing, again, it implements load balancing for uh, you know application load balancer, gateway load balancer, network load balancer. All these kind of different load balancing activities can be done using elastic load balancing service. I have created two part series for understanding load balancing in depth. So you can check that as well. API Gateway is all about managing, creating, publishing, securing APIs, testing APIs. So if you want to connect two different systems with the help of API and you want to transact between the two systems using API, then you need to use API gateways. So under analytics, the first product is Amazon Kinesis, which, is, which helps us collect, process, store real-time streaming data from, um, for example, streaming video games, for example, from IoT devices, anything wherein we need streaming data to be captured and processed immediately, we need uh, Amazon Kinesis as a service. And then there are multiple offerings within that. So you, for example, you have Amazon Kinesis video streams, which is specifically built to capture uh, any kind of real time video which is coming in live. For example, there is a football match which is going in live. You want to capture that and process information out of it, then you will plug in Amazon Kinesis video stream offering uh, to process it. So this is something which you need to consider if you are if you are working on processing real time streaming data. So the second in the list is Amazon Redshift, which is AWS answer to Google BigQuery. AWS Redshift is AWS reply or a competitor product to BigQuery, Google BigQuery. It also helps you run analytics workload uh, meant for your data warehouses and data lakes. It is SQL based, so you can use uh, Redshift for running all kind of your analytical use cases and ad analytical workloads and then you can store the data in Redshift and then process it in your machine learning in your AI or ML models. You could do pretty much everything uh, because it's really really fast. 
you could process exabyte of data in seconds so yeah it is one of the very important service if you are coming from a data analytics and data, data warehousing background aws glue is purely an etl product it is a data integration service which helps you connect with various kind of different sources it could be real time it could be batch it could be iot whatever and then you could use aws glue to create etl workflows to process the data analyze the data extract transform and load the data into the target systems this is a very important piece if you're designing your data pipeline and if you want to know more see or check out my data pipeline video under machine learning one product which i have highlighted is uh, amazon sage maker because this product can be used to build train and deploy all types of machine learning models it can help you implement machine learning operations which is also called as ml ops so while working on these ml models you don't have to care about any back end infrastructure needs because aws process it for you so if you are a data scientist if you are a ml engineer you need to understand more about amazon sage maker so the next category is security and in security the main service which is used across all clouds is iam identity and access management so as the name suggests iam goal is to understand who can access what where who is the user can access is the policies which you uh, you know which you enforce and what is the actual resource which is coming into the picture so you could create fine grained access controls using identity and access management this is a very important area and that's why we have cloud admins i am admins managing the security of the platform managing the access and authorization authentication and authorization of uh, the cloud platform so cloud iam is a very important service kms key management service lets you create manage and control all kinds of cryptographic keys which you use to encrypt and decrypt your data so kms is a very important service coming to containers eks elastic kubernetes service is a managed service provided by amazon to run all kinds of your kubernetes workload if you don't know much about kubernetes or containers you could check my videos on the same the second in the list under containers is fargate fargate is the serverless compute offering to run all kinds of container workloads so if you have a container image you could simply deploy it using fargate and rest all uh, regarding the infrastructure needs will be taken care by this service and then this fargate can also integrate with eks so the 24th and the last product in our list is amazon cloudwatch which comes under monitoring as the name su suggests it's the watchman of our whole aws platform because you with the help of cloudwatch you could collect you could process you could analyze and then eventually act on all kinds of logs which get generated by different uh, services which we have discussed and other services as well so it gives you a uh, system wide observability as far as aws is concerned so if you are working in sre devops support roles then cloudwatch would be one of the very common services which you would use guys with this we come to the end of this video and i hope you know something about these 24 services which are quite common in aws but i'm sure you know other services which are better than these services so do let me know in the comment section the service name and what exactly it does in one line and it will help the audience to learn more about aws platform if you have anything which you want me to make on aws like i did in gcp let me know and i will learn it and i'll share with it so until next time guys keep learning keep sharing all the knowledge and yes keep hustling bye for now